Hi, Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. As I release this video, the 2018 Sphere Challenge is going on, so with this project I'm going to incorporate a sphere, this time as a lid to a box. But I'm also going to use something I saw a demo on recently, and that is a spiral turned outside to the box. It's kind of subtle. I'll need to go deeper the next time I make it, but it still, I think, is quite a quite a feat to do and points me in the right direction, which is what ideas are supposed to do. And I'm really excited to see the results from the sphere challenge coming up. So meanwhile, let's make this box with a sphere for a lid. For this project, I'm using some wood harvested from a gum tree in my yard. Some call this urban forestry. Although I treated it, it has been too long and the wood is in rough shape. After roughing it with my large bowl gouge, I'm cutting tenons with my skew. Now I need to mark three lines, 120 degrees apart on the cylinder. I have to use my phone flashlight to see the index markers on the back of my chuck. Then extend the lines to the center on each end and number each line on both ends. I have to pay attention to not mix up the numbers. I reverse the cylinder to get good center marks on both ends. I'll use these to gauge distance from center. I'm also marking limits on both ends of the cylinder that I'll use to see how far to cut once I put it off center. Now for the first off center mark. I'm shifting about 3 8 inch from center and using line number 1 at the headstock and number 2 at the tailstock. Now I'll cut a shallow cove between my two end lines. Now I'm shifting to number two on the headstock and number line number three on the tailstock. Another shallow cove between the two end lines. I'm trying to make it the same depth as the first cove. And finally shifting to line number three on the headstock and line number one on the tailstock end. It is hard to judge the depth of the cove. My best bet is to watch the shadow at the top of the rotating cylinder. Now for some sanding. I'm trying to power sand with 80 grit, however I have to be careful not to sand off the ridges that formed between the three coves that spiral up the cylinder. After some power sanding, I switched to sanding by hand up through the remaining grits. I decided to apply some lacquer sanding sealer and sand it again before moving on. Now I'm mounting the cylinder with the tenon I cut earlier and drill out the center with a 1 and 3 quarters inch Forstner bit. Then I sanded the center. I did not need the second tenon, so I'll cut it off now and round off the top end that will receive the sphere. Then I sanded and applied a sanding sealer to the top and inner surface. Then I applied lacquer to the entire project. I like finishing as I go and using finishes that I can easily blend together. However, I don't like the lacquer I'm using. I need to find some of the old stuff I used to use. Now I'm reversing the wood. Masking tape is protecting the upper surface. Now I can trim back the bottom to sit well on a surface. I'm using a spindle gouge with very light cuts. I'm undercutting the live center, but not severing it until the last possible moment. After sanding, but before removing it from the chuck, I'll sign with my wood burning setup. Then sand again to remove any scorching. Then a little more sanding before applying lacquer to the bottom. Now for the sphere I'll use for the lid, another piece of gum wood. I'm following the same process as my detail video, first to round it off and measure the diameter. After I marked off the key points, I decided to shift a little. New marks are easy enough to mark for ends and corner points. Then trim down the ends to a diameter equal to the side of my octagon. Then cut the 45 degree sides down to the end tenons. Finally, rough off the corners to my rough sphere. 
After a quick trip to the bandsaw to cut off the tenons, I've mounted the sphere to a cup center for the first to trim. Mark an equator and rotate for the next trim. And again. Then sand using the same routine before finishing with a mixture of beeswax and mineral oil. Finally, I buffed both pieces. My off-axis box is only a slight offset, so the ridges are subtle. I'll increase the offset next time I turn one of these to see how that goes. Meanwhile, subtle is good. A bit scary turning the off-axis part. As for the sphere, this time it is a lid for the box. No fitting required, no grain match required. I like it. I'll put it in the sphere challenge. Let's see what you can do with a sphere. This project was fun, only a little scary. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, tell your friends, and send me your comments and questions. Every week I make a new wood turning video. Please wear your full face shield. Goggles are not enough protection. Until next week's video, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns.